I feel like some of the stuff, you know, when you're interviewing these coordinators during the game, like right when it's happening, some of the guys might give you something real. But the rest of it, I'm like, they just talking in circles. They're not really telling you anything. Like, for example, the lady was uh, interviewing one of the coaches, the D coordinators, right? They had just caught a, uh, a blitz on third down, got a sack, got off the field. Lady goes over there, hey, man, what made you call that blitz? Sue talks about everything but the actual call. He's like, man, I love the way defense playing right now. Man, we fired up. You know, we, we got to play. It's like, but she asked you, why'd you call that particular call? It was something you saw. He's like, you know, man, this just feels good right now. It's a great day. It's like, bro, man, I want answers. I want, like, if you're going to give me, the, if you're going to interview it, interview it. Talk about it. But if they just going to beat around the bush, I'm like, man, we ain't got to have that. But then again, you might catch somebody, you know, late in the game. If they feel some type of way, they might give you something juicy. I kind of like the idea of the super challenge that was brought up by the XFL. Mm, okay, okay, okay. Challenge any aspect of any play. Yeah. <laughs> if I was the Eagles, I probably would have used it on that third and eight. Hey, yo. Did you see? Now, there's something going out there with the conspiracy with the, th the, the whole sod in the field, too. Okay. There's like this lifelong Chiefs guy that's been working these Super Bowl fields. Oh, He's my actually. Oh, been getting rings from the Chiefs as they win Super Bowls. Mm -hmm. So there's that, that. that's a whole different story right there. But also on that third and eight play, I'm seeing the Chiefs left tackle grabbing the face mask of the Eagles guy that was blitzing yep. on the edge. Mm -hmm. It's just, that's why we need this super challenge. It is funny though, man. All that stuff. The super challenge, common sense rule, whatever you want to call it. I, I, but do you feel like people would be okay with that? Because like you just said, if... They don't call that. Say he doesn't hold Juju. Juju makes that touchdown catch, right? And they super challenge and say, hey, this tackle touched his face mask. So this tackle held this player. Y'all would lose y'all minds. Every mm. Fans would lose their mm. minds because it's literally holding on every play. I can, we can, That's what I'm saying. For a fact. So literally, you could just wait until it's a touchdown. Or wait I until probably, it's a I probably play. wouldn't have felt good about that yeah. either because that would have been considered ticky-tacky. You're right. Yeah. For the most part, how the ref set the tone. They let them play. Mm -hmm. So if a, a grazing of the face mask or whatever, you get quick hold of it, yeah. determines a reversal of a juju touchdown, there, it, yeah. that doesn't feel good either. Yeah, but if they go on a replay, when they slow it down, they're going to hit you with that freeze frame, and he gonna, whoever's on the call or whoever's on the call is going to circle that thing up and be like, hey, look at this hold right here. This is another face mask right here. And we're going to be in here like, bruh, this has to stop. I'm just saying, all of a sudden, the refs were trigger happy with those flags on that third and eight play. Mm -hmm. They missed. They missed one. Then they missed yeah. one. Yeah, man. But back to the XFL. <laughs> but no, the XFL, man. Um, in terms of just the opening weekend as a whole, I'll say this, man. I thought initial reaction was good. I thought the money that went into it, you could see, uniform wise. That's the first thing I always look at. I'm like, what's the quality of the equipment? What's the quality of the apparel, man? Y'all out there some rinky dink, or y'all got like actually good stuff. I thought that that was the first thing that I liked because optically, if I don't think. You guys got quality equipment. Why am I going to feel like I should invest my time in this product? So I thought that it passed the eyeball test from that perspective. Then when you talk about the TV deals, them playing on ESPN and ABC, it gave it big boy football vibes. Um, whenever you play on ESPN, man, the camera packages that they come through with to your stadiums, man, being the guy who's been behind the scenes doing the color commentary and stuff like that, you get to notice it, man. It's night and day. The The amount of money and the amount of resources that they come with, yeah, it's, it's unmatched. So when you watch the actual quality of these games, regardless of the players, you look at it and it, it looks like it's a big time game because of the camera angles, because of the quality of it. So I thought that all of that was good. The next thing was the names. Man, I could count countless Steeler connections, Pitt player connections, West Virginia player connections, just as a whole, it was just good to, to you know, go down that list. Some of the names that I had wrote down, man. Martavis Bryant, obviously we're going to talk about him in a little bit. Kalen Balaj, was watching him out He's that in the thing. League. Bro, he was cooking in the league. Ryan Lewis, sound familiar? Pitt DB, absolutely, man. Play, he was in uh, Philly for a couple of seasons, man. Came out with Avante Maddox. Okay. Absolutely, man, during that time frame. JMU Dukes in the house, Liam Fernando, John Daka, and my homie Ben Danucci, who was throwing touchdown passes to Josh Gordon. I know you know that <laughs> name, right? He sound familiar? Uh, Josh Gordon sound familiar to you? I saw that highlight you know where Danucci made that pass and someone said, It's Mahomes. If Mahomes did this, the whole crazy. place would go crazy. If Kenny Pickett did it, everybody would lose their mind too, bro. That's that's typically how it goes. But it was good to see that. Tazar Skipper, remember him, right? He in that league. 
Travis Feeney, sixth round draft pick, man. This was in 16 to the Steelers, man. He was also in the league, man, cooking it up. Tyler Vons. I like him. He was getting off as well, man. And then from a coaching standpoint, Hans and that thing, Joey Porter. Shout out to PZ. Yeah, they got some names. Bob Stoops. Bob Stoops, absolutely. Brad Gradkowski. You remember you remember Bruce? Or I said Brad. Bruce. Excuse me, that Bruce Gradkowski. O. C. Okay. So we got a ton. And like I said, that ain't even all of them, but that was just the ones I had briefly wrote down that were popping up when we were when I was watching the games and stuff. So man, with those names, once again, when I'm watching, it catches you. It's the nostalgia. So, like, you hear a certain name, I'm like, damn. They're missing Money Manzo. No, they're not. No, they're not. They, they got Paxton <laughs> Lynch. They got Paxton Lynch. That's the nostalgia. They, got, they, they got, benched his ass. Hey, bro, it, it was perfect nostalgia. I was like, I've seen this story. This is th- 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 There we go. I remember this. You know? So, yeah, yeah, man. Paxton Lynch is in there, so that's count. That's like Manzel-ish. Yeah. But as a whole, I thought that they did have good names. I thought that they did have good quality. And I thought some of the gimmicks that they do have, I think that it's not too gimmicky. But at the same time, I think that it could potentially, as we talked about before, make its way into the NFL at some point in time. You brought up the Super Challenge. Um, obviously, we talk about them having the command center where you can actually hear Dean Blandino, who obviously used to do that for the NFL. He's doing their command center for the XFL, and he will legit have a camera on him and take you through his thought process. So there is no confusion as to why they might have said what they said. Like, we run into it at the NFL level. We're like, man, what was he seeing right here? The James Bradbury call. We don't know exactly why the guy made the decision to make that decision. Dean Blandino, he's telling you everything in terms of why he's doing what he's doing. So I think that that's potentially something. When you talk about some of their extra point rules we know we got you can go for one or you can go for two and we've dictated it now where they'll move the ball back if you're going for uh, one they'll keep it close if you're going for two xfl has something similar where they have a one point play a two point play but they also have an additional three point play so when you're talking about some of the late game scenarios it still maintains football integrity but the point structure is a little bit different just based on what they view as more challenging. Where's their three at again? Uh, I believe it's from like the 20 or 25, I think. I was going to say, that makes sense. Yeah, it's from like the 20 or 25. Uh, the two yard, uh, the, the two point play is from... Traditional two, kind of, or like the five-ish? Yeah, it was, because it, everything is far back. It was like the, the one yard, the one point play is like the closest then they go back like five it's either five yards or ten yards for the two-point play and then additional for the three-point play and then also they have an alternative onside kick as well so you can go for a regular onside or they have a fourth and 15 option where you put your offense out there because you know deke he always says he would much rather have his offense on the field than kick an onside kick so that gives you that opportunity to run a fourth and 15 what have i said on that in the past you've typically said that you would rather do that than an onside kick I definitely would if yeah. my team's down. Yeah. I don't know if I like that league-wide, though. Why not? I feel like it's too easy to get. It's very easy to get. That's way too it easy to get. It makes it challenging. It puts, but put it like this, though. I saw two scenarios where that played out uh, over the weekend, one where it did work and one where it didn't work. Both were exciting as heck, though. I'll say that, man. Um, it is more exciting. If yeah. you're down, you would re- much rather have yeah. that opportunity than an onside kick. So literally the scenario I saw, both teams were down. One team was down... Um, was it like they were down uh it's like seven or, or nine points they end up getting the three-point conversion come back this was and, against yeah, Hines, this team. come back and do the fourth <laughs> and 15 and complete and they were like whoa and now they got that ball and they really got live action to go ahead and win it whereas i saw in another game where they got it did the fourth and 15 and literally it's bang bang you throw it he throws a dig girl coming across the middle the guy has it and it's just a heck of a play by the lb separating him from the ball but also they let it ride in the sense of, you know, in the NFL, you hit a guy too hard. And everybody's going to say, oh, my God, throw the flag because he got hit too hard. They ain't even contemplate that in that league, bro. He smashed on me. Fah! Separated him like OG style. Loved it. And there wasn't even a peep of, oh, it should be a flag. I didn't even hear the – because that's the other part that pisses me off sometimes with the commentators. They'd be the first ones hollering, oh, that's a flag. Oh, that's too aggressive right there. It's like, bro, don't even plant that seed out there. But them commentators weren't even on that. They were, in fact, were like, this is what you get in the XFL. You're able to hit like this. <laughs> so I'm like, man, if you can keep that type of stuff up for it to be open and weekend, like, obviously, we know that it's open and weekend. So it's supposed to look good. That's supposed to be your first impression. We got to see, can they sustain it? But as a whole, my first, like, reaction to it, I liked it better than some of the other leagues that we've seen you know, come about in the past. I think in terms of just the quality of players out there, 
the money that's went into it, the TV deals, and even the coaching staff names, like not even just head guys, but throughout the staff, I just think that it has a lot more, you know, quality to it. So, you know. One of the things that caught my eye was The Rock's pregame speech that he gave. Oh, he, did you I, see this? I, I did not watch it live. I, I quit the, uh, the t- uh, Twitter on it. Though. He's got me thinking these dudes are locked to go to the NFL. He's got me thinking these guys are going to cure cancer once their football career is over. They're going to be like the best humans that the earth has ever seen because they're going to the XFL. How he was talking, he's like, the yeah. X stands for when the dream hits opportunity. Yeah, man. You guys are going to you guys are gonna make it happen. You, this you know and what? Because if, if he don't believe it, who will? <laughs> it, hey, hey, I, I was I, like, damn, I should join the XFL. I'm telling you, bro. <laughs> th- think about it, Deke. When we first started this thing out, we believed it before anyone else believed it. Rock the same way, bro. <laughs> you got to believe before anyone else do, man. You got to. He over here like, it yes, was so bro. Good. It was He's so like, good. yes, it's going to be like that. <laughs> he gave you a full like provo, like, yeah. But in reality, though, I look at it like this. Why can't it be? Why can't those guys come out there and show something special? Show that they actually are still good enough to get another opportunity to play. Because that's the thing that has been missing. We talk about NBA players. how You can go spend a year in the G League and come back. You can go overseas, you know, for a year or two and come back. NFL, you don't really have that. You got to go to CFL where, like you said, the rules are just different. That's not traditional football. So with that, man, when you talk about some of these caliber players, bro, Vic Beasley out here. Vic Beasley, former first-round pick, former NFL sack leader. He out that thing playing. I'm like, bro, it's just dope to see that, hey, man, a guy like Vic going to get another opportunity because you show what you do out here, that you're healthy, that you can still run around and make plays. Somebody will call you up because we see the talent. We know that you, we know what you're capable of. We've already seen you do it at this level. So in that vein, it's like I said, I definitely like that part of it. But it's going to be, you know, can they sustain it? That's going to be the big question because you got to keep the people interested, man. So the quality of play has to stay there. The money has to stay there as well. If you start taking this off of ESPN and ABC and you put this on these like weirdo networks, I don't think it works the same. But I think when they're doing it like how it is right now, they make it feel like it's a big deal. And as long as they can keep that up, I think it got some potential, man. I think What's going on with the USFL? <clears throat> so they're about to start up as well. Obviously, that's when where we have the uh, the Pittsburgh um, the Pittsburgh team. The Maulers. Yeah, the Maulers. I was about to say, what are they again? Yeah, the Pittsburgh Maulers and some of those. Uh, I forgot. I literally had it listed up, too. I was looking at the, the differences the other day. I feel like that'd be such a good way to yeah. keep the spring league leagues a yeah. little bit more interesting if you take the winner from I the xfl agree. and the winner and of the USFL, against each other yeah just for yeah. like one you know the yeah. spring league super bowl to me i like that idea or if because i don't think you're going to offset it where a person can play xfl then turn on and play usfl and then try to go to the league because i think that's a lot of football on players bodies and you're just setting them up for failure but i do like that potential dynamic of Man, how about you make this thing a head-to-head at the end? Almost like with yeah. wrestling. Remember when OG wrestling it was WWF and WCW? You know what I mean? Like that type of concept. Like, man, just give me something where we know both of these organizations are dope. But, hey, man, we're going to put money in both and then have them meet at the end of this thing somehow, some way. So, yeah, I could definitely see that, man. I'm trying to see when this thing's starting. Yeah, and the other concept that I thought of was... April 15th, so it's a minute. Yeah. Because their Super Bowl or XFL is in May. It's Mother's Day weekend, May 13th. Okay. Yeah. So probably not this year, but potentially coming forward, if both leagues can survive. That's the other part. Because they both got to show that they can actually live. Yeah. Can they stagger them out maybe a month? Yeah. Because I'm sure that's what they're not trying to do is compete with each other on those yeah, weekends. Especially when you're talking about at this stage for both of those organizations. You don't need that and the confusion part for branding. But I would say that um, either both organizations or the first organization that can get paired with the NFL as a potential feeder team. Oh, for bro. sure. Yeah, Whichever team that does too. that, I, yeah. I promise you, like if they can get that type of connection, I think it works perfect. I don't feel like the XFL is trying to compete with the NFL, though. I'll see what the USFL is if they're trying. But right now, I don't think that they're trying to compete with them. So if they're not trying to compete with them and they can make it where they're like I said, essentially a feeder team or, hey, all your practice squad players, when they're done, they got to come in and they either play down here or they get the opportunity to play down here because they're yeah. not playing in the actual games. I think that that gives you interest because if I'm a fan, I agree. think about it, if we're fans, right? And we know that Jalen Warren, for example, he's on our active, but say he was on our practice squad. McFarland could be a Yeah, example. McFarlane. Okay, McFarlane. He's on our practice squad right now. 
Say they was like, hey, man, you got to go down there and play at least three games. At least three. You don't think we're going to tune in to see what he looked like? Yeah, we, we will. We want to see. We want to say, hey, man, has he improved? Where is he at? Is there somebody out there that looks better than him? Because we saw him even look good this uh-huh. season when he got those snaps in that yeah, Colts bro. game on Monday night. Yeah, man. But running back room got a little bit loaded with mm-hmm. Najee Harris and Jalen Warren playing like he has. Yeah. So, yeah, Anthony McFarlane with that speed element that mm-hmm. we've been talking about. Has it improved? Has right. he gotten more control over himself with miss? that? Can you make yeah. guys miss an open field? You know who else is in that league, bro? It just made me think of when I said Jalen Warren. Mateo Durant. Oh, you wow. Think about just those two and how drastically their careers shifted. Both here at the exact same time. I remember coming on this show saying I like Durant more than I like Warren. I said the same thing. And think about how these two dudes changed everything, man. Warren has solidified himself as our number two running back. We didn't know Played Warren had that game. dog in him. We definitely did not. We definitely did not. I, I, we should have known by his story. Yeah, he, he went to Snow but College and Utah State. We didn't, know his, State and we didn't know his story all the way until he like solidified. You could hear it in his voice though when we yeah. interviewed him. As soon as we talked, I'm like, "Yep, okay, I was wrong. <laughs> I apologize." <laughs> But during that time, we were Mateo Durant guys. But it's crazy to even see now, because of how the season played out, we never got a chance to see what Mateo could do with pads on. But now, getting a chance to watch him, I'm like, okay, these are some NFL quality guys out here. Can you make a guy miss in space? When you get to the second level, what are you going to do? So for me, it was cool to even see that dynamic. So like I said, I definitely hope this league and the USFL can be sustainable because it does provide these dudes with another opportunity as the consumers it gives us another opportunity to see some of these guys and you know as a media guy helps us with content going back to what you said about the feeder program and why i think it would even be more perfect Mm -hmm. is i have no clue who any of these quarterbacks are for the most part outside if we had a if we had a minor league thing where it was set up with the nfl you could get the backup yes playing in this league think about if mason rudolph right yeah he's been here if he's our third guy or even when duck was here as our third guy if we're like, hey, Duck, you got to go down there and play a couple of these XFL games, a couple of these USFL games, you know we would watch it. For a fact, we would tune in on that thing, man. Think of like Stetson Bennett coming that's into what, the league exa- right now. That's what I'm saying. If he doesn't get any time in his first year or two. You put him on the, you Georgia, could, yeah, whatever the throw Georgia him in one of these XFL is, teams. Man, come on, bro. Absolutely, bro. Like, that would be interesting. Uh, but yeah, just seeing practice squad players or guys you have buried on the depth yeah. chart. At least it's a reason to tune in. Yeah. You have that Steeler connection. You have yeah. whatever team connection that you root for mm-hmm. to the XFL. It's It yeah. just makes it more interesting. And that wouldn't even hurt because you talk about adding that dynamic, the feeder league dynamic, with the already storylines that they have where you get these second chance guys. We talk about Martavis Bryant. Talk about Josh Gordon. Right. Brought up Vic Beasley. Shoot, if Alden Smith wasn't so you know far off with some of his stuff, he would be another guy that I'd be like, bro, why isn't Alden in this league? Johnny Manziel, well, you Well, what's him his up. face? Why uh, Ruben Manziel? Foster, he's on the Pittsburgh Ruben, team. Yeah, Ruben's in this, absolutely. That's uh, for the USFL, right. but yeah. It's like, man, it's just, it's another chance for these guys that feel like they're still capable and maybe for some reason whether it been what they did or not did, but it's going to give them another chance to get back out there. Shoot, I was even thinking to myself, I was like, man, for guys in my scenario, right, where it's like, man, you felt like you're done playing, but you might have changed your mind and you want to come back. Bro, this is a perfect league, man. You're if, thinking? Not at all. Stop it. Not at all. But I was laughing. I was like, bro, if Join I... forces with my I, I, said, I said, man, if I had the itch to play, before I would call up to say, man, let me hop back in this What's NFL... What's TG thinking? <laughs> we'll ask him on Wednesday. How about that? <laughs> like, yo, T. <laughs> What's up, bro? <laughs> we trying to make a go for it. Is Maybe not XFL, itch? but the USFL, man. You got some time, bro. <laughs> you got some time. But no, in all seriousness, though, I did think of it. I was like... If I was a player or if it was a person in my scenario that was contemplating or had the itch to still play, bro, this is a perfect dynamic. This is a league where it's like, man, it's not the best of the best. But if you want to see, do I still, am I still capable of that? Let me go put my foot in that water before I jump in that pool. Or you got the crazy ones. It's like, let me hop in the big pool right now. I I still got it. But it's like, nah, that gives you another opportunity though, man. So like I said, with that, I do like the concept, man. I hope it works out. You mean to tell me if somehow Manziel got wrapped up in this? A Manziel uh, versus like Stetson Bennett game? It'd be fire, bro. That'd be cool. It'd be fire. Have T.O. as the receiver? T.O. Sure, sure. was still lurking. Like, he he, just, he just played low-key last year. He played with Manziel. I know, but yeah. that league was a hack job. It was. It was. Are they doing that again? I don't know. But <laughs> that was But atrocious. all I'm saying is a guy like T.O., for example, he feel like he still got it, right? 
He thinks that he's capable of going out there and playing at the NFL level. Well, a team hey, with Manziel, T.O., and Mark bro. Davis. You be sitting here like, man, <laughs> hey, we, we in San Antonio, and it's, and it's April, right? Or it's February right now. We need some type of, let's, let's get somebody in here. Call up T.O. T.O. go out that name, man. First, and, and I will say this, too. The crowds... It was actually good amount of people in these games too, like at the at the games in attendance. I was a little because when we watched the AAL when that dropped, it was like kind of sparse. You know, what I mean, we weren't a lot of fans out there. But this was actually, like I said, it was still a good amount of people that were at these games. But yeah, I think of like all them type of dudes that we might have been fans of in college that flamed out, or we were fans of them in the league and they got in trouble or something happened. I'm like, bro, these are your leagues right here, man. This is the second, third chance league, bro. You need a second or third chance. This is the league for you, bro. Combine that with having guys in the NFL that are buried on the depth charts mm-hmm. playing in some of these games. It, yeah. it, it actually could be interesting. Yes, bro. Now, I think money-wise, it would be interesting. Um, the the I think the hiccup is the contracts. When I say money is the contract element, element of it with the um, – if you're on an NFL roster, I'm taking on your risk. Practice squad, preseason games, mm. whenever you're active, I take on that risk. But when it's the off season, it's in your contract that you don't do anything that could jeopardize your availability for me and my league and my organization. Sure. So that's the only potential issue I see is how do you bridge or what's your contract like if you're because I think it could only be practice squad guys that you play both ways. Because if you're on an active roster, 53 men. The money that you're getting as the fifty three, the fifty third guy is still going to dwarf what you're going to get in the XFL, and I don't think that you would want to take that risk if you're, you know, one of the the owners up here. You don't want to take that risk with your assets. But practice squad, we know the value is down on them by their compensation, by their workload, by how the organization treats them. So it's like you clearly can see where they're not viewed to the same extent, and we know how quickly they move on from these guys. So I think that it would potentially work if we're really focusing on that caliber to be like that feeder going back and forth. Cause otherwise I'm like, I don't see how the NFL, if I'm Mr. Rooney and you try to tell me, Hey man, let, let me get this, this third running back. That's on your roster. That's active. I'm like, nah, so he can go get hurt playing on this game in April. And now I'm stuck. Nah, nah. But if it's a practice squad guy, I think it might be different. Wouldn't it be cool too? Almost like the pro bowl where you have your team Jersey, but you have the, the logo. team logo or something. Isn't that how NFL, That'd Europe, be cool. be, Europe, NFL Europe, you might be too young. NFL Europe, they used to have like... I remember it, they but had like the I affiliates. don't remember watching it. Yeah, so they had like the affiliate teams, right? And I, in fact, I think Debo might have played in NFL Europe, bro, with the... Yeah. Okay. So you would go over there and they would have like a little logo of like your team, but then your jersey would be like the Frankfurt whatever sure. or, you know, the EU whoever's. But you would see like every team would have like whoever their NFL affiliate was, their logo would be up there. So that could work. Oh, did they have 32 teams over there? It, it wasn't 32. Okay. Um, yeah, so it could be like mixed and match. Yeah, because I well, what's my dude Fred Jackson? He was another. Dude. I think he played over at NFL Europe, bro. Yeah, that was like a thing though, man. Yeah. yeah, I just feel like it'd be cool. So Las Vegas Vipers, for instance. Yeah, Martavis is like our guy that we send mm-hmm. over there. He's got a little steel logo, but then yeah. you got other players like isn't Geronimo Allison? Uh-huh. He's got the Packers logo. Yeah. Someone's That'd got a Saints tough, logo, That'd but they're tough. all under the Las the Vegas Vipers. Team. Yeah. But you know who's representing the squad yeah. in the NFL? That'd be cool. Yeah, I like that, bro. It's got potential, man. It sounds like a pipe dream right now. It does. It does. But, it hey. feels very logical, though. It does. Like I feel common like, sense. I feel like in the past, the big issue was money. Based on opening weekend and based on the people who are backing it, it doesn't seem like money should be an issue. If money is not an issue, I don't see why this thing doesn't work. As a standalone, but more importantly, potentially pairing up yeah for me for me to up, like really get into yeah. it i think you got to pair it up if for it, me personally no, that's the thing i think if it pairs up it has infinite ability to like grow and become like real life a part of our football culture i think if it doesn't pair up it can still stand alone but i think we view it like how we look at the cfl we acknowledge the cfl we know players go up there but it's not at our forefront it's not our focus but the cfl has been going on for years right but it's like, all right, we know y'all up there, but we don't. It's not something that we're looking at on that level. I think XFL, if it doesn't pair NFL or even USFL, I think we will look at it and say, all right, we know it's a secondary league out there, but it's not gonna have that same level of feel that like we're talking about as if it was connected to one of these particular teams. And man. you know, the NFL is trying more and more, and they've yeah. 
pretty much succeeded. They've done a damn good job mm-hmm. of getting their league to be everywhere, twenty four seven, three sixty five. And think about where these cities are located. We don't have NFL teams in all these cities, so now you're tapping into more and more markets. More markets, but that USFL mm-hmm. schedule—that's the perfect time where you would say the NFL, in terms of news and stuff, yeah. is at its dead point, probably between like April and June. Yeah. So all of a sudden you get that league, dude. We're we're gonna be interested. You got a couple Steelers uh-huh. on one of these USFL yeah, teams. Man. We're tuning in every yeah. week. All right, what are these guys doing? And you still and then, I mean, for the NFL, you got combine, you got free eight. Like, bro, they could dominate the calendar year. Realistically, they could dominate it, bro. Oh, shout out to uh, to Wade, Keith, Ramel, Edwards. Yeah, they pulled it up. Uh, it's the rain, rain fire was who Debo played for. He was in wow. NFL Europe. Yeah, rain fire. Yeah. <laughs> Shout out and Kurt Warner. Kurt Warner played over there. Dark, uh, Dark Donnie. He pulled that up as well, man. Yeah, bro, that was like a legit thing, though, bro. Yeah, <laughs> like I remember, I was probably 10, 11. I remember it would like come on. It was, oh man, it'd be like on Saturdays. I want to say, yeah, but they definitely like it was a thing. They I know like, it was in Madden. Crazy like uniforms and stuff, bro. They had it in Madden yeah. three, and then I guess it disbanded shortly after that because yeah. I never saw it again in Madden. Yeah. But now it was cool though, bro. I'm seeing some names that people are bringing up for the XFL. Marcus Vick, you know, bro, you know, I'm a- <laughs> Marcus Vick needs a tryout. That's what Rod Dallas said. If my, if my dog is down, I only want to say my dog because he 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 was wild. Vick is Mark Michael Vick is my dog. Marcus Vick, we just know him. Yeah, but you know, if he if he could get his on straight, then you know it'd be worth a shot. I don't think he gonna pull that out though, man. It's, at least when we talk, Josh Gordon, Alden Smith, it was like, hey, y'all played within the past ten years. Yeah, Marcus Vick, he's got to be what. Bro, he's older than... He's, he's got to be close to 40, 40 right? Yeah, yeah, he's older Well, how old's now. Vic? Or Mike Vic? Vic, Vic is for... Uh, yeah, Mike got to be like 41, 42. And Marcus was just, what, a few years behind him? A couple years behind him? him, yeah. So he's, what, 38, 38. 39, probably? 38, yeah. hasn't played in probably 15 years? Easily, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's... But hey, once again... For a guy like him who might feel confident enough, he is a big enough name that, hey, you know what? If you one of these teams, man, bring him on in here. We'll, we'll see what you can do. <laughs> Paxton Lynch, he got an opportunity. It didn't work out. He got benched. Not saying that it can't come back to him though. So for Marcus Vick, if he want, if he had that desire, yeah, man. 